the journey of a season, Jack Revolt is our longest serving member. Jack, great to have you back. Boys, how are we? And Jack, a are we? <laughs> a debutant tonight. He's one of footy's most thoughtful leaders and he has lived life's big experiences. Sam Doherty, Sam, it's great to have you with us on 360. No, thanks, Jared. Thanks for having me on and it's uh, good to be here. Ready to take up the journey of the, the issues of the weeks. Yeah. The... I've come into a topical week, which is always good, <laughs> but um, no, I'm uh, looking forward to, to being a part of the team. Settled into the season? Yeah, it's been it's been a good start. Obviously, the draw in round one, a um, bit of a strange result, but um, yeah, to get two results after that, um, pretty pleasing. Although, don't feel like we're playing our absolute best footy, we're um, we're getting the wins, which is always good. And a new contract just to settle things at the start of it all as well. Yeah, new contract, a little baby girl. So yeah. there's uh, there's a fair bit going fine, on. Jack. That's that one. Fine. The little, yeah, absolutely little, fine. Little three month old. So how's that all going? Yeah, no, going really well. She's uh, she's sleeping really well, which always helpful, but. Um, yeah, put it to bed before I came here and then rolled in uh, for tonight. Very nice. All right, let's delve a little bit, shall we? Is the, the week-by-week -week conversation at the moment, the penalties are consistent, I reckon. The application is right. There is clearly resistance from clubs and players. Did you think Griffin Logue would stand as a suspension? Uh, yeah, no, I thought Griffin Logue... It was so brutal that I thought that it had to, had to probably stand. Um, yeah, so that was... There's been a clear shift, obviously. We saw the broad incident last week, um, and then this week we've seen a couple of high contacts that maybe there, maybe there is a shift now, Jared, to the action rather than the consequence, uh, which I probably believe is the right way to go about it. Even a couple of sling tackles we've seen over the weekend as well that haven't resulted in concussions per se, but have still looked dangerous. Um, but, I mean, th th this could have ended up a lot, lot worse. Um, so, yeah, look, I, I still think they're the sort of acts that we want to get out of the game and, and we want to prevent the serious nature one happening. So coming to a conclusion of one week is probably a, a fair, fair uh, result. So the tribunal is asking Griffin Logue to get lower and to contest the ball. Is that a reasonable request of the players? Yeah, I think so. I think the, um, the, the action of, of two players going, we had, we had a great one with Ollie, um, Ollie on the weekend and one of the GWS boys, they both just went hard and low, very hard contest. That's, that's sort of what we want in the game and um, anything that we can do to prevent head knocks is obviously um, what we should be doing in the game. Um, there's there's so many different variables in the game that make it really tough to do that, but um, the more we can prevent, the better. And that's probably the narrative, doesn't it? The narrative needs to be about protecting Will Day in that situation. It's not about punishing Griffin Logue so much. It's about, no, we're doing this to protect the players going for the ball from what we know could happen down the track. Do you think we're more getting more consistent now with what, the, what it looks like? Do you, are you a bit clearer so far this year going, OK, I know what the difference is between initiating a bump and bracing for contact? Or we still, you still think it's a bit of a grey area? Well, I, th I think we're slowly starting to figure out what it's looking like. I think Jack's um, explanation before is that the, the action versus the result. The previous two years has always been on result. It didn't really matter what the action was. If you, if you got someone high and they were out for a while, then you got punished accordingly. And then it, sometimes you got away with the same action with less result. And that yeah. resulted in no suspension. Um, I think, as Jack said, that it's starting to become a bit more of the action versus the result this mm -hmm. year, which um, is going to play out over the next sort of three or four weeks when we start to get a good feel about what that's actually going to look like. The two pivotal ones are obviously the if you can contest the ball or look like you're contesting the ball, then you go for hell for leather. The other one is with the sling tackle. As soon as you put your both feet down and you look like you've anchored them and you start swinging, then you're in trouble. So that it's and players adjust as you adjust to new rules and whatnot. So hopefully we can adjust as a playing group, um, male and female. To, to get to the game where we're not seeing sling tackles and we're not seeing these high bumps just due to better technique. Uh, do you want to give us a completely objective and not invest in your <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> the tribunal is now deliberating, so they're locked away behind closed doors. It's hard for me to be objective with it, having um, had Blake in my ear the whole week about the fact that he wasn't trying to bump at all, he was actually trying to smother the ball. Um, this is what I was saying about the unfortunate instance in a game. It, it's it's going to be hard to get them all out. Um, because arguably, um, in my opinion, um, I think he's trying to smother the ball, just gets in a really awkward spot. Um, but whether that's a week or not, we're going to find out in the next sort of half an hour. And hopefully, for my sakes, in my team, um, he's there on the weekend. But um, as we were saying before, if you hit him in the head, it's, it's going to be tough. So, so what do you think? Day. What do you think of that one? Well, it's interesting the Torn Peck was used as an yeah. example. <laughs> <laughs> Don't put him out in the ground. But uh, <laughs> I, I can see the one where he sort of put his hand out and then realised, oh, I'm in a bit of trouble and then sort of gone a bit limp. Yeah. But I still think that any contact to the head, if 
like sort of a half-hearted play on the ball. It's, I mean, it, it's a, it's an interesting one. Mm. Umpire descent is oh, back with us. Go. The ghosts of Easter. Wasn't there past. for the first two weeks, and all of a sudden it's, crop, it's popped up no, again. So this is in your game. I'm so curious the on-ground reaction in real time. What what was? Did you know instantly what was going on? No, I had I had no idea. I had to ask the umpire what it was, and he said descent, and I just assumed that. Did you ask him nicely though? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was very nicely actually. <laughs> well, I didn't give it away the other way, so no, I just I, I had no idea. I'm actually not far away from. Um, you can actually yes. see me just there. I'm actually having some dissent at my teammate for not hearing me with the ball. But um, no, I had, I had no idea what happened. He said descent. I assumed that it was he swore at him or something. That's my initial reaction. And having seen it after, that does happen a lot in games. Um, I had a press yesterday and my response to it all is it's going to be hard with human error in our game. I think there's, there's always going to be a sense of grey in our game and we do have to accept that that's part of it. And umpires are humans, they're going to make mistakes just like we as players make mistakes, so um, it would be nice to know whether that's going to be an ongoing thing moving forward if that's sort of, we're back to the start of last year when that was that was 100% a free kick and um, it was a really costly moment in, in that game of footy, so um, if I was probably on the other side I'd be a bit more flat about it, but we got the yeah. win off the I, back I of it. I feel like we have the right balance here, because we have one of the more calm and calculated players <laughs> in the game and one of the more emotive that oh. have, have played the game. Do you because you're, you're a smart man. Do you have an idea of what the threshold is at the moment? Like, do you sort of go, look, I know I can no, ask no one or has I know an idea. I, what I can't. No one has an idea because yeah. the umpires have admitted that each umpire's got a different yeah. emotional reaction to, to players. So how, how are we to know what, whether we catch someone on a bad day or a good day? Yeah. And, I mean, there's, there's moments after that, um, that descent free kick where players are doing the exact same thing and we don't get the... We don't get the same result. So, I mean, we're, I, I'm, I'm scratching my head. Are there some more sort of senior umpires that you know, that, you've, that have umpired for a long time, that you know, you can probably ask those questions and they'll give you an I answer? I would have said and... way worse things. <laughs> I've done, I've done yeah. more demonstrative stuff to senior umpires and had, had just had a normal conversation or just asked the question, which you do sometimes. Yeah. Like now with four umpires, there's one genuinely around the, the centre of the ground, the key forward. You'd be like, why is that a free kick? Mm. And that's a bit of a natural reaction. And, but that could be deemed as dissent, um, and which is the Coniglio example there. So, I mean, I'm still scratching my head about it, and I think most of the footy public probably are as so well. So I think that's the outlier. So that's below the threshold. Yeah. I, I reckon if you read So would you say lines, that was wrong then? Yeah, that's yeah. an unwarranted free kick. Yeah. But the AFL doesn't want to say that because it becomes a free-for-all for you. Yeah. Any, you can go back to any level of dissent that you like. Yeah, well, it's funny that we haven't seen anything in the first two weeks, and then all of a sudden this sort of cropped its head up, and it was like, oh, that's still a rule. Because even at the back end of last year, it, it's, it's sort of we found sort of water found its natural level a little bit, and yeah, there's the full abuse ones where they're swearing and verbal and really demonstrative. But that was a very very costly free kick at a, at a pivotal time in a game. So I think it I think it definitely has a place in the game. Like the rule is there for the right reasons, and I think we have to have it as part. But again, what level? constitute the free kicks is going to be such a hard part because as Jack said there's every umpire is different every umpire can take it differently and every umpire is going to choose their decision differently but if you go back to the crux of the rule of to protect the umpires um, and more broadly at local level I think that the free kick and the rule is the right thing but how we get to what's right and what's constitutes a free kick. It's going to be just incredibly hard What's dissent and what's appealing for a free kick yeah. as well? Yeah. That's no, really interesting. I, no, I think that's really clear. Where there is no decision, you're appealing for a free kick. Yeah. So, so is Coniglio appealing the... for a free kick there? Because there was no decision on McKay. No, there was a decision. What was it? It just wasn't the decision he yeah, wanted. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. You couldn't stop complaining, could you? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no, that, no. That actually, hey, Jared. Uh, far be it from me to say, but that would stop it. Jared, if you stopped Jared. complaining. Me stop complaining? Come on now. <laughs> All right. Um, you're part of Good Friday as Sam and you've lived life's big journeys over recent years. Is How do you find going back to a hospital environment and seeing young kids like you would have done earlier this week and their struggles? Yeah, it's tough. Um, I, I find going to the Royal Children's one of the, the tougher ones to do, um, more from your own personal bias. And uh, I was just saying to Jack backstage, now having a child myself, um, puts an extra layer on it. We went yesterday and there was a um, there was a little girl that was in there. She'd been in there for 10 months. Found out on day 10 of her life that she had leukaemia. So they, their whole lived experience of their child has been in hospital. 
you look at it both ways and you just understand how much great work that the Royal Children's actually does and it gives you a great perspective about what we're actually doing and what Friday actually means um, to a, a, a really wide range of people and especially the people that are in there. I think shining a light on the great work the hospital does but um, bringing a sense of joy um, to the families. Like that's as, as hard as it is to go in, it's one of my favourite things to do because you go in there and sometimes it's not about the kid, it's actually about the family. Yep. It's about the mum and the dad that are sitting in the seat beside them that are watching their child have to go through something pretty tough and essentially you're bringing a smile onto their child's face but a, li a living memory that they get to take with um, back home and, and wherever that um, brings great joy to their whole family. How many days would you have spent in hospital in your couple of stints? Uh, well, the main, the main one was, was chemo last year and that was uh, about probably 30, 30 days total, Yep. which in the grand scheme of things is probably nowhere near what some of the guys are doing um, in the Royal Children's at the moment. Um, they're tough places to be. I, I don't think any, anyone that's been in hospital, the, as much as you know, try and talk yourself into the food being any good, the food's rough, then you're staring at the four walls, you don't, you don't want to leave. I think in COVID, we've just come out of COVID years, I, I, I was terrified coming out of hospital going back into the world knowing that my immune system was low and the risk that that had on me if I was in contact with COVID and um, all of those families have had that that fear for the last three or four years where they've obviously got their child that's going through a really tough time but then if they, they get some chances to go outside they've also got COVID that if an immune, immunocompromised child gets COVID that could have been the end so um, yeah, I don't know. If, I, if I bring it back to just footy and Good Friday and, and what we get to do this week, um, it's a great privilege that um, us as Carlton and, and the Kangas get to play on Friday and, and represent that whole organisation and all the great work that they do. Yeah, well said. Tigers, big game this week. Just yep. a bit off at the moment, particularly offensively, just not clicking on all cylinders, but yeah. big game against the Dogs. Yeah, it's been interesting. Really strong defensively, both sides in round one with the draw. Then offensively, we're, we're better and then... Defensively, we're actually pretty good on the weekend, um, keeping the, oh, I think they're probably the Premiership favourites and the highest scoring team to 60-odd points. So uh, there, has, there has been a, a bit of a focus on offence, but it's funny how they marry in offence and defence so much. It's, you've got to sort of give up a little bit to, to get a bit more if you want to, if you want to play a bit more freer. Um, defensively, you, you, you probably give up a little bit. So it's finding that balance and um, had a conversation with a few of the guys during the week. It's that, that's what the season and, and the start of the season is for. It's finding that balance. You want to come out and obviously play great footy round one and be winning and whatnot. But you still need to find out where your system stacks up. And we think we've got some really good areas. Uh, and you've probably only got to look to the last sort of 20 games. The weekend was the, the most we've lost by in the last 20 games in our losses. So we're doing some really good stuff defensively. We would like to score more because um, that premiership profile is sort of around that 90 to 100 points in a game. Um, so there's a few things. We get a couple of bikes back this week too, which is pretty important. Who are those blokes? They are good ones. D. Martin, he goes all right, uh, and Jacob Hopper, who, if you asked me a week and a half ago, uh, when I was standing on the half forward flank and he went down, he grabbed his knee and I just went, oh dear. Uh, but then to have, have one week with just um, a, a minor leg issue, um, yeah, it's good to good to have him back. Good to see you, Sam. It's lovely to have you as part of our Great family start. here on. Well Great start. Sam oh. Doherty, Jack Revolt with us on Players Night. We're heading west shortly to a young gun. This is what's in store for round four, the Easter.